Welcome to Mastermind Gameplay. In the last episode, I showed you how to build automated rover, remote rover, in order to detect ore on any planet. Today, we're going to do a little bit of modification to that design. Yep, you're seeing it right. Those are two drills ready to go on the new version of the rover. They are fully automated and only require one button to activate. Before spending any extra time, let me go ahead and move this out to the ice and I'll show you what we can do with it. Now this is remote operated, but the drilling system is automatic. That means once you engage the drilling system, it'll continuously drill until your cargo containers are full and then it'll stop. Unfortunately, there isn't really an AI basic drive controller. There's a AI basic flight controller, but that doesn't really help when we have rovers. I like to move away from my main shop and try to find a place that's not going to leave a bunch of holes right next to our location. I think somewhere over here will probably do the trick. The design of this rover is very handy because as you drill, you don't always know when your cargo containers are full. But in this sense, it'll automatically stop once they are. That'll be a great indication where you can just drive it back to your station and connect it to, say, O2, H2 generators, a cargo container, or even a refinery through the connector. So this is fairly balanced, even though it has two drills on the front of it. I think it may tip a little bit. I have set up these advanced rotors as the trigger to start the drills. These advanced rotors, I just have it set up to reverse. Once chosen, you should be able to see them rotate and everything else come together, such as your pistons moving, your hinge changing direction, and then finally your drills turning on. Afterwards, the drill should lower into the ice. Ooh, looks like we have too much weight after the center body here. May be a problem. I did connect these drills to the connector and not the medium cargo container, which may have been a bad idea. As you can see though, these drills are just chewing right through this ice as the pistons are pushing them downward. Of course, there's not going to be enough ice just in one spot. You'll have to move your rover just a little bit here and there. Once we do get a full cargo container though, it is going to retract the entire system. You will be able to set this up so once the cargo container, your O2H2 generator, and your connector are all full, or if you also want to include the drills, you can, then it'll hit a limit, tell the event controller to retract everything. As you can see, we're doing alright for the ice so far. We're not quite there, not quite full enough. Once this hits about 10k in an O2H2 generator, we'll know the medium cargo container is basically full, and so is our generator. This thing is being powered by two hydrogen engines. Those hydrogen engine generators produce plenty of electricity for the electric drive systems. I am currently in creative mode, so in order for it to work properly in survival mode, you may want to add a small hydrogen tank here and there. That way your hydrogen generators don't run out. And there you have it. Completely full and, uh, yeah, well, not exactly what we expected. Alright, so 
the weight was definitely too far aft of the center of the rover. And we may have to consider that to fix it later. Well, now we know what to consider whenever we build it again. Back to the workshop. And we're going to start out by projecting our original rover. But we're just not going to build the entire thing. I'm primarily just going to build the lower section to include the wheels, the camera, the drone controller, and that's about it. And then we'll do some modification. Of course, you don't have to use this model at all. If you want to tinker around and design your own, that's perfectly fine. But I will be adding this to the Steam Workshop in case you want to try it out. This is quite a bit of weight on the bottom, since these uh, should all be heavy steel blocks instead of just lightweight ones. We wanted to be able to compensate for the weight of the drills. Oop, didn't get that one. Make sure you're out of the way of the wheel when you're trying to build the wheel. For the most part, this rover really only takes maybe 10 to 15 minutes to build completely. And even if you're in survival mode, it does not take that much material. It's far less than building a flying drone, which we'll experiment with later on in the series. Make sure I get all these back pieces. Not sure which ones we'll have to remove. I think that's about everything on here that we need. Oh, better do this side. And I realize we're still missing a wheel on the right side. There, now I think we're done. Okay. remote camera we have the ore detector we have the antenna i think if we just turn off this projector oh let me hide these batteries first don't need all that taking up our room if i just turn off this projector instead of losing our blueprint we'll still stay in the air where we're suspended but we'll be able to add everything to this initially once you go to put on your arms for your drills and stuff though, you'll want to disconnect so you don't get confused on which pistons are what or which controllers are what compared to your base. I think we'll start out with adding this connector on the back. That way it kind of gives us an idea of how much space we'll have. Better change the color on this thing. There we go. Then medium cargo container after that. O2 H2 generator. And, of course, the two hydrogen generators. They may not fit if you still have blocks on the side, though. Doesn't look like it, so we'll probably have to remove two of these side pieces here. Oh, there goes the battery. And then try it again. The good thing about having this still connected to our grid while we're constructing the basics of it is that we'll just turn the projector on, reproject the same blocks, and add them back. With this space in the middle here, that's where I'm going to put the event controllers and timer blocks essentially. Let's start with the ore detector and antenna, otherwise this thing really won't react to anything we do.
And for the vent controllers, I'm just going to stack them like a cubby hole here. And then add some timer blocks. You may not need as many timer blocks as what I put on here, but I like adding extra just for future planning. In case we want to add additional functions to this, we don't have to worry about where we're going to place them. There, that's pretty basic. So now that we have it down, we can start adding those arms. And I'm going to add these advanced rotors to the medium cargo container this time instead of the connector. This will put us a little farther towards the center of mass and we shouldn't have a problem tipping over. Well, hopefully we won't. Now don't worry if you don't catch on to all the controls or all the settings for the vent controllers, the pistons, advanced rotors and such. I'm going to create a secondary video just to show you how it's set up. If I did it on this video, you'd be suffering through about an hour-long conversation. Remember, as you're going along, to always label what you're adding. Otherwise, you may get confused on which piston is which, which advanced rotor is which, which hinge is which. And then it turns into a guessing game. It might seem kind of tedious where you constantly have to go back, choose the next thing, relabel it, but it's better than fighting it in the end. Next is your hinge. Those two dots should be in the front or back, but consistent. In this case, I'm putting them towards the front. We'll change this to the left hinge. And if you want to test this out to see which direction it is, it might be a good idea before you add everything else to it. This hinge and piston will be what projects the drills forward and then reverses to allow them to dig through the ground. Next is the drill. I have a tendency of building this upwards instead of forwards because that way it doesn't interfere with the rest of the chassis. If we come back here, to the advanced rotor, we're going to change these settings. It's currently at 360, so we want this lower limit to be 0. And the upper limit is going to be 90. We don't want it to go any farther than that, because otherwise we start hitting our own ship. Initially, I'm going to put it at 0 0.25 or a quarter of an RPM, just to make sure we're going in the right direction. And it looks like it's going down instead of the opposite. So let's reverse this. Let's increase the speed to 2. And then we have to adjust this hinge. We want the hinge, again, to make the drill head point forward instead of backwards. Otherwise, while you're driving, it's going to offset your weight and you're going to have terrible handling. Because either you won't have enough weight on the front wheels and you won't be able to steer or you won't have any traction or you'll have an issue with them um, getting in your way. Now for the right advanced rotor. Again, we're going to set this before we move on. A 90 degree small conveyor.
It's much easier to see which direction it's going when you only have one small item connected to it. The other important thing I find is that if it does interfere with your building, this did earlier, because we have the hydrogen engine on the right hand side and the left hand side, I decided to move this to a 90 degree angle up in order to continue building and then we'll lower it back down. It may get slightly confusing because the other one we did at a horizontal angle instead of a vertical angle. Again, this will be a piston right base, but I just labeled it incorrectly. Another 90 degree small conveyor tube. Your next piston, this is your arm piston. And once you have that on, it should be all right to rotate the advanced rotor back again. Let's go ahead and change this warning back. There, now it's piston R base. And we'll continue on. Oh, forgot to change the advanced rotor, I suppose. Just like on the left side, we're going to make sure that the hinge, the two dots, are on the front. Then we're going to label the hinge. Add the final piston. I do label these to kind of match so they're all in order. If you notice, I've been putting left or right after whatever the component is instead of beforehand. That way when you go back into your terminal, you'll see all your pistons in a row, all your drills in a row, etc. It may become very confusing if you have to constantly search through your terminal access. And we're just moving this back forward. That's about it. That's pretty much the entire build of it. Except for showing how you set up the vent controllers and timer blocks. As mentioned, that will take quite a bit of time to show you. But I'll be sure to add it in the next video. We should just have to open the doors and drive this thing out and we'll be set. It is very handy, by the way, if you're inside of a hangar, to remember to use a sensor block in order to automatically control your doors so you don't have to constantly deal with them whenever you're operating a remote rover. Well, a remote anything, really. Thanks for watching. I hope you appreciate the video, and please leave your tips and tricks in the comment section. I appreciate it.